page turners and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matthew, the man with a hat who reads, and it is time to look back at the month that was. This is my January 2023 wrap up. So we're starting off the new year pretty solid. I got 10 books finished in January, up one from a year ago, so I'm actually ahead of last year at the same point. And some of the books this month were a lot bigger. My original TBR had 13 books in it. I didn't get all of them done, but I figured 10 out of 13 is a pretty good month anyway. We'll talk about the ones I didn't get to first, or didn't get finished in the case of this one. Matt Ruff's 88 Names. I'm just about halfway on it. I am enjoying it. I'm not enjoying it as much as Lovecraft Country, but it is entertaining. I am having a fun time with it. And then these other two were my carryovers from last month, December's two I didn't get to. We have Annalie Newitz's The Future of Another Timeline. And, of course, again, this seems to always happen, but <laughs> Lady of the Lake by Andrzej Sapkowski. I have a hard time getting the Witcher novels, apparently. I'm going to get to this one in February because it is Fantasy February, so I'm adding it into the TBR for February, and I'll have that done because it's been carried over how many months now, and it's time to get it out of here. And as for the other two, I'll obviously finish 88 Names, even though it's not fantasy. I'll finish that probably first of the month. And this one I'll just shove back probably to March. So I will read it. Don't worry. It'll happen. But So let's talk about what I read this month. So we'll start off. There was two library books, and we'll talk about them first, as we usually do. So The Ink Black Heart by Robert Galbraith is the sixth book in the Cormoran Strike series. I have enjoyed most of the series so far. This book is, I don't know if I'm starting to notice more problems I'm having with the series. This book did not really work for me as much as some of the other ones have. I've started to notice that these books have been progressively getting longer. And I know with a mystery like this, they kind of acknowledge it in the premise of the plot at one point about how, well, these mysteries don't just wrap themselves up. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and just a lot of false turns to get to the actual solution to the mystery but come on 1012 pages for a mystery novel really it does feel that length too it does feel long I still enjoy the characters I still enjoy the story and I like all that but it if they keep getting longer eventually we're going to be looking at 1500 page books and I can't I can't commit a whole month and a half to, month to one book. I mean, I really just drug on that thing. And I did get it finished, but it did slog a bit. <sighs> it did slog a bit. <laughs> but anyway, I still gave it three stars. I still enjoyed it for the most part. It just was, it could have been trimmed down, I think, a little bit. And then there was The Book Eaters by Sonia Dean. I enjoyed it a lot. I kind of wanted more from the world. There's a lot going on in the short 290 pages or whatever it is. I really enjoyed it. I wonder if there'll be more. I mean, it does kind of set up towards a sequel. Other people have talked about it. I mean, the concept was fun. It's very interesting. I liked almost everything that happened in it. I gave it four stars. I had a good time. So let's talk about the books of my own that I read. So first book I finished for the month and the year was my reread of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. I don't need to say anything about this. If you've read Harry Potter, you know this is just great. It's a typical, it's a young adult fantasy that defined a generation. I still loved it just as much as I did every other time. It's still my favorite. One of my, it's one of my favorite series. It's probably one of my favorite entries in the series there are some good entries in there and some that I don't like as much but we'll talk about that later so then I finished Tarzan of the Apes and the Return of Tarzan by Edgar Rice Burroughs I really enjoyed Tarzan of the Apes the Return of Tarzan I thought slogged a little more but that might be just me I as a whole I liked both of them they're just they're nice adventure stories they feel very still feel very fresh all these years later I did like the first one better than the second one, 
but both of them are good. I think I gave like four stars to the combined of the two, but if I was going to divide them up, it'd be five and probably three and a half. So average is out to four. That's just kind of what I did with that. Then we have Bill Flanagan's 50 in reverse. And this was my first disappointment for the year. I, I don't think this book knew what it wanted to be. It started out like, okay, he woke up in his younger version's body. That's weird. And then it's like, okay, well, so now he has to relive his life and make different choices, maybe. But then it just gets, it keeps getting weirder and weirder. Pretty soon, history is not happening the way it, we all know it to happen, the way he knew it to happen. Um, it just, it's not very long, but it felt like it was a bit of a slog. I don't know. I didn't love this. I'm glad I didn't. I kind of found this at like Dollar General for like two, three bucks. It wasn't that bad a price and it wasn't terrible, but it went in directions I wasn't expecting and I didn't love it for that reason. But, but I did love Scott Lynch's Red Seas Under Red Skies. I was very hesitant to carry on with this because I really loved Lies of Locke Lamora. If you watched my top 10 from last year, you know it was in my top 10. I'm like... Can the sequel really come close to that? It can. This was fantastic. I almost needed to start writing notes down because of all the backstabbing going on and then the bait and switches and the betrayals upon betrayals. I mean, there's just so much going on. And it's almost it's almost too much to keep track of. But I really loved this. Probably liked the first one just a tad bit more. This was still a five star for me. I still really enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to reading the third book, Republic of Thieves, probably later this spring, early summer, April or May, I'm thinking of right now. I don't, I'm going to give it some space and be ready for it because obviously I have a lot of fantasy to read the next month. So, and by. March, I'm going to want to break from my fantasy other than the Harry Potter reread, and April's already filling up, so probably probably May for Republic of Thieves, if all goes as planned. Then there was Mark Greeney's The Gray Man, the first Gray Man novel. I thought this was okay. I didn't love it. I mainly read this because I was going to watch the movie, and I'm still planning to watch the movie within the next couple weeks. I haven't gotten to it yet. But from what I'm read of reading of the synopsis for the movie and what I've read in the book, you know, what I've read in the book now, having read the book, it doesn't sound like it's a very faithful adaption. It sounds like they make a lot of major changes. So that might be a video for adaption discussion to watch the movie and then read the book, having read the book, then watch the movie and just see how they do. It doesn't sound like they do a very good job, but I don't know. I haven't seen the movie yet, so I can't say that for sure, but this was fine. I didn't hate it. It was fine. It moves right along, really fast-paced. I don't know if I'll continue on with the series, or I I might. I don't know. It just I'm not, As of right now, I'm not thinking I'm going to continue with the series, but who knows. Then there was Eric Idle's Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, a sort of biography, which it's Eric Idle. I mean, guy is a comedic legend. The song is a masterpiece. You all know the song. And if you don't know the song, go look up the song because it's so, it's such great words to live by. This was very interesting. It feels very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? All over the place, which is fine. If that's, I mean, it, it does seem like we really just are constantly moving around. It's not a straight-up biography because of it being all over the place. I enjoyed it. Don't know if I'd revisit it, but I did enjoy it. Then there was my reread of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> Remember what I said earlier about how some of the Harry Potter books I like more than others? This is one I don't like as much. And I don't know exactly why... But even on my original, when I was a kid and read them for the first time, I remember reading the first one, and then the library didn't have the second one on hand when I went for it, but they had the third one. And me, like an idiot, I read them out of order the first time around. The thing is, is that I didn't feel like I had missed anything. 
reading first book and then the third book. And having gone back down, and then having gone back to read the second one, I'm like, yeah, it was fine, but it just didn't, I don't know, it didn't feel like it all clicked as much. And in rereads, it still isn't my favorite. And even on this reread, it's still not my favorite by any means. There's just, it seems like we gloss over a lot of the year. There's just chunks where we're like, oh yeah, and then it was spring. Um, Lockhart is easily the most annoying character in this book, if not the whole series. I don't like him, and they focus too much on him. Um, it just, I mean, I liked some of the stuff. I like that we meet new characters. I like that we're building the story up for what we know is to come. But it just doesn't feel as magical as the other ones do. It just doesn't. I don't, it's just, maybe that's just me. I'm sure it's just me. I'm in the minority, I'm sure on that. I know people love that book, and I'm glad you do. It's not my favorite. If I was to rank the series, not counting Cursed Child, it would probably be my bottom pick, but that's just me. And then the last book I finished for the month, actually finished it on the last night of the year. Night of the year, night of the month. <laughs> Jeez, the year's just starting. It's not over yet. DJ Butler's Witchy Eye. This was the first in the Witchy War series, I believe it's called. I don't remember what the series is called. Yeah, I think it's the Witchy War series. I really enjoyed this. This was so interesting. The character, I mean, it's set kind of like in the American Revolution era of times. North America's different. They have the Appalachian folk magic. There's a lot of magic stuff going on. There's zombie-like creatures wandering around. I mean, there's just... There's so much going on, and I really enjoyed this. I can't wait to dive into the rest of the series at some point. I have to go and hunt them down. But this was a four-star read easily. I really enjoyed this. It is a bit of a chunker, which is the theme this month. I think there was like three books I read this month that were over 700 pages. So there was some big books in there. But anyway, my favorite book of January 2023, 23, 22, 23, was Scott Lynch's Red Seas Under Red Skies. This was my lone five-star book for the month outside of the first Harry Potter. But I don't count rereads as this kind of stuff. So really enjoyed this. Although this was very close. I almost gave this a five star, but it just, it did, it did have a couple spots where it slogged. So that's why I only gave it four, but this one gets a five. It's my top book of January, 2023. And that was my reading for January, 2023. 10 books in for the year already of my 140 book goal. So not a bad start. It's not going to, I'm not going to hit the goal if I just keep at that pace, but February should be similar to January. I think I had like nine books in that TBR and some of them are fairly chunky books. So we'll get through some of these big ones here in January and February and then March, maybe I can clean house on some of them other ones I have sitting around. So that's my review and my wrap up of January. What about you guys? What did you read in January? What was your top book of January 2023? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep turning pages.